Dozer. And yeah. Dozer. Dozer. If you're working on creating a homestead kitchen either in town or in your country house, and you're curious which tools you really need and which ones you can just skip, I'm taking you into my kitchen today to show you what I can't live without after 10 years of cooking like a homesteader. For weekly advice and inspiration in cooking like a homesteader, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified when we post a new video every Tuesday. Okay, so there are kitchens, and then there are working homestead kitchens, and there's a big difference. The average modern kitchen and utensils that come with it are designed for folks to make box mac and cheese or microwave those takeout leftovers. So when you start using your kitchen like great grandma would have, well, some things have gotta change. So these are the tools I use every single day in our working homestead kitchen. They're not expensive, they're not gimmicky, and they're timeless. So first up is cast iron, of course. Cast iron is timeless, it's durable, it's affordable, it lasts forever, and nothing says homesteader like a rack of cast iron hanging on the wall of your kitchen. I actually don't use a single piece of the trendy Teflon nonstick cookware anywhere in my kitchen. And I found that once I got used to cooking with cast iron, it's really easy and it's not difficult or sticky at all. My best tip for you if you're transitioning over to cast iron cookware is to use fat when you cook. And I know in decades past, low fat was the thing, but a lot of modern research has come to find out that fat's actually not bad for us, at least the right type of fat. So I don't have any problem at all using butter, bacon grease, lard, whatever, when I am cooking in my cast iron pans. That keeps the food from sticking and hey, fat makes everything taste better anyway. I also think if you can display your cast iron out in the open, it just really brings an awesome vibe into a modern kitchen. So my little trick for homestead kitchen decor is really to not use decor, rather use the functional items that are a part of your everyday cooking routine, whether that's canisters of food or wooden spoons or cast iron. It's really, really fun and it gives an amazing feel to your kitchen just to have those functional items out in the open. But I love that feel and I think that's what an old fashioned kitchen would have anyway. They probably wouldn't have pictures of a rooster on the wall, rather they would have the tools and items that they're using every day to cook with anyway. So the next item I can't live without are wooden spoons. And I need to clarify that by saying the good ones. I'm a stickler for tools that feel good in your hands when you use them. That really is part of my joy that I find in the process of creating in the kitchen. And using good tools is a big part of that. I like them to feel a certain way, have a certain weight, and I just enjoy the process more. So plastic for me or rubber just doesn't cut it. So I use wooden spoons for almost all of my mixing, sauteing, serving, whatever. Now quality is the key here. So the ones at the dollar store just don't feel right to me and they tend to crack. So I spend a little bit more. My favorite spoons are from a place called Old World Kitchen. It's an online shop. They're amazing, they're handmade. And if I take care of them, they should last forever. So a few notes for wooden spoon care. Don't ever put them in your dishwasher. Try not to leave them soaking in a vat of soapy water. Just hand wash and then every couple months you can apply a little bit of spoon butter or oil to keep them happy. And I happen to have a spoon butter recipe that I'll link in the show notes below. Alrighty, so Dutch ovens. I use my Dutch ovens almost every single day. Whether it's for soups, pasta dishes, roasting chicken or beef, making bread, I put them to work constantly and they show it. Now, Dutch ovens don't have to be expensive. There are some really fancy brands out there, but mine I got at TJ Maxx. They were about 30 bucks a piece and they work great. They cook evenly. I love that they can go from the stove top to the oven to the table. They're heavy, they'll last forever. And these particular ones are like a cast iron with enameled. So they get a little bit stained over time, but they should last for years. 
So the next tool I absolutely can't live without are glass jars and canisters. Now, of course, mason jars are the one we think of first, but I also have a huge collection of gallon jars and different miscellaneous jars that I've grabbed at garage sales and thrift stores, TJ Maxx, Ikea, wherever. Glass jars are timeless and they're not gonna go out of style. And that's really my trick. Anytime I purchase something for my kitchen, I want it to be timeless. I want it to be something that's not gonna go out with a trend, that's not gonna break in two weeks. I want it to be something that's high quality, durable, and that you can't tell what era it's from and if it's 100 years old or if I got it yesterday. I also like my storage to be beautiful. So I don't like to leave a lot of the things I might buy at the store, dry goods or beans or grains in their packages. Most of the time, when at all possible, I like to take them out of their packages and pour them into a glass jar. That makes it really, really easy for me to see inside and how much I have left of whatever that item is. And it just looks really cool. It kind of gives that old fashioned store vibe to your pantry or your closets or your shelving or whatever. I have a little bit of open shelving in our kitchen and so I like to use these jars with their pretty beans and grains and things as part of my display and part of my decor. And lastly, I cannot live without a giant collection of stainless steel bowls. I do have glass bowls and wooden bowls too, but the stainless steel ones are really the workhorses of the kitchen. I use them constantly, especially during canning and gardening season. And I like that they can go outside and get left in the chicken coop for a week or two. Not that that ever happens. <clears throat> and they're none the worse for the wear. Bigger is better. And you'll find that when you start homesteading, you're going to need a lot of big things that you didn't need before. Large stock pots and large bowls are crucial when you have 60 pounds of tomatoes coming in from the garden or you're processing a bunch of food. So grab a giant bowl and then grab some smaller stainless steel bowls. They don't have to cost a lot and I think you'll find you'll use them probably more than anything else in your kitchen. And there you have it. So of course there are a few more things in my kitchen than what I mentioned today, but those are truly the tools I couldn't live without. And they're low tech, they're easy to find, and they're usually pretty darn affordable. If you're wanting more of the nitty gritty on creating a working homestead kitchen of your own, grab a copy of my free Heritage Kitchen Handbook. It includes my best tips, advice, and recipes for transforming your modern kitchen into a vintage one. I'll share the link below in the show notes. And if you liked this video and found it helpful, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your fellow homesteaders. Then drop a comment below and tell me what tool can you absolutely, positively not live without in your homestead kitchen. Thanks for watching guys, we'll be back next week.